welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be making a sword, so we're going to start out by using a subdivided plane and we're going to rotate it by 40, 45 degrees with R and then we're going to select the bottom four edges and we're just going to pull them down and then scale them on the x-axis I think by zero and then bring them out. What this gives us is a triangle that is made up of quads and that's a really useful geometry and this is going to be the best possible geometry for making a sword and also for changing between um, areas of detail when you're doing subdivision modeling in general. So now I'm going to start by just scaling in a bit to make the sword a bit more pointy at the top and then extruding down to create the main blade of the sword. Um, yeah, so once I've done that I'm going to extrude it out a bit and then just change my angle so I can see the thickness of the sword a bit better and I'm going to add a loop cut down the side and then Alt S to scale it along the normals and then that creates the edge geometry along the blade. So now I add in a loop cut and then you can just slide slide or move I move in this case um, a point upwards there and that's going to create the fuller of our blade. So then we select the faces from both sides and then it's just a simple inset and that has created the fuller for us. So now I just throw on a subdivision modifier really quickly and that's gonna just show me how the edge flow is going and then I just add in a couple of small loop cuts to add a little bit more definition to the edge of the blade. Okay, so now I'm going to move to creating the handle of the sword and the way I'm going to do that is just by selecting all of the faces along the bottom and then extruding them out and once they, oh, okay, no, I scale them to, to zero first and then extrude them out and then I extrude them out again just scaling where I need to and just pushing the handle out of that blade and we can see now that at this stage the the um, the top of the hand guard here is essentially the same geometry as the blade just scaled up but that's a really useful thing to have we just fix any overlapping edges and now I'm just going to go and create the main handle just testing out to see what looks good here um, this is really where the the elegance of this edge flow comes in is everything is isolated the, the blade is isolated from the handles that is isolated from the guard and the blade itself will have smooth loop cuts going around and none of the loops interfere with each other too much. So right now if you you could stop where I have here um, and that would be really good for a non photorealistic style. Um, if you wanted to use tune shading or something, throw on some freestyle, you could get yourself something really quickly. So now I'm just adding to the guard a bit. And then 
Now I can throw on another subdivision surface. So now viewing in my subdivision surface, you can see again that even without adding any edge sharpening or support loops, we're getting something that's very, very close to, to the shape of our blade and the shape that we want things to look. So I just go now and I just start adding some support loops where they're needed, sharpening up edges. And you can see because we started the sword off the way we did, that when I'm adding support loops, there is always the right amount of geometry there to support them. It's very difficult now to mess this up. One of the things that you could use this for is for the base of a sculpting mesh. Um, if you wanted to go in and sculpt with multi-resolution onto this, it would work really well. But that's about the size of it. If you want to add more definition to the blades, you can with just more loop cuts to create more support for, for the blade. Um, thanks for watching.